You're not talking to me, are you, pal? Eh? You're not talking to me. I don't blame you. This boy's had his knackers off today. I've had to take his cone off to save the furniture and him, because he was just crashing into everything. Put it on again at bedtime. I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey Ozzy, look at this. It's a nice pair. That's that time of year again where things wither and die. Walk was yet and you can shake a big stick up. Uh, this time last year I'd done a hundred miles bikepacking on a big heavy bike. I was fit and strong and things were going just great for a 56 year old man. And two weeks later I go for a bicycle and I end up in hospital and stay there for two weeks and that's because I developed a heart condition called ventricular tachycardia. Now what that is, is uh, your four chambers of your heart, you've got two atriums and two ventricles and basically the, the signal to beat your heart comes from the atriums and somewhere between the atrium and the ventricle the signal gets lost, shorts out and the ventricles don't pump, they just hang about, flapping away and not pumping blood and what that basically does is stop the, the uh, blood from pumping around your system uh, it caused me to feel very very dizzy and as if I was dying uh, it wasn't very pleasant at all 11 months on I thought I'd give you a wee update as to where I am and what's happening now uh, over the last year they've put me on um, various tablets the ones I'm on at the moment are called Sotalol and Basically, when the ventricles stop beating, well, they, they stop it from stopping beating. However, it doesn't always beat at the right pace or the fill levels that it does aren't quite correct. So what that feels like to me is breathlessness. It's like uh, pressure in my chest. Uh, the best way I can describe it is if you're, uh, if you're slightly chunky, like some of us are, and you bend down to do your shoelaces up you know the feeling that you get in your, your diaphragm and when you're when there's a bit much freight pushing up against your organs that's what it feels like it's, it's hard to describe but it's not very pleasant and I feel like I'm about to expire at times um, obviously they, they tell me there's no limit to what I can do but if I feel that then I should stop doing it and what I also get now is because the fill rates of my, my heart aren't quite right, I get extra beats and they're called ectopic beats where it tries to reconcile what's going on. It's quite a clever little thing really, your heart. So I've still been getting out and about. I still take the dog for walks. I can walk 10k. I've been going out my bike less and less. A, because... <laughs> If I'm walking the dog, if I walk 5k with the dog, then uh, I don't feel like going on my bike. I feel like having a rest. I don't have the same amount of energy uh, or enthusiasm as I used to. And uh, B, I always have to have someone go with me if I go on my bike because I get anxiety now about what I'm doing. I don't want to be alone if something happens when I'm out in the wild. From up in the hills and it would be the worst thing ever if I was to if something was to happen and I was unable to to summon help uh, help that could definitely sort me out so yeah that's always playing on my mind so I don't do as much and of course my fitness my general fitness has fell off now um, so it, it just wasn't working the tablets weren't working 
they were helping but not working. So um, I saw a consultant a, a few weeks ago and he put me on a waiting list and he said it would be three to six months. However, I've had a phone call today and they've told me that they've got a date for me and it's next week. So now I'm shitting myself. There are a few um, risks with the procedure. You have a chance of cardiac arrest, obviously. You have a chance of stroke. Uh, there are some major arteries and veins and organs, depending on which uh, ventricle they, they have to operate on. Uh, but what they do is basically they take a, take a couple of catheters up the arteries from your inner thigh and push it all the way up your blood vessels uh, into your heart, blow them up and then they put a hot point in there. And whilst they're looking at the electrical signals from your heart on basically what's an MRI machine, they, they move the hot point into the place where they can see that your short circuit is happening and they kill the bit of flesh there with a hot point, a bit like a soldering iron. And once that's done, the short circuit can't happen anymore and everything is hunky-dory. That's the theory. And for the people I've been speaking to that have had the procedure, it's been 100% effective for them. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's what happens for me, obviously. So in a couple of weeks, I'll either be fighting fit or not around anymore or basically knackered forever. I'm hoping it's the first one. But I'll let you know because some video will come out of me doing something. Alright, catch you later. Fuck's sakes, not cause yet, super gain.